Welcome to this Fiber Force instructional video. My name is Dominic Babinski and I'm the Director of Business Development for Synca. If you're watching this video, you've either purchased Fiber Force or you're thinking about it. But in either case, what we'll review today is two things. One is how do you construct reinforcements for new construction using Fiber Force, and two, how to use Fiber Force as a repair material for existing dentures. Fiber force is an ideal material for reinforcing new construction dentures and as a replacement for metallic options such as cast and mesh frameworks. A fiber force framework like this one can quickly and easily be manufactured in about 20 minutes. Let's begin the review of the fiber force mesh fabrication process with a look at model preparation. Trim the final working model to ensure all sharp edges are removed. This will be important later on in the process when the model is placed inside the splint vac unit. Complete the model preparation by applying a separating liquid and allowing it to dry. Adapt the fiber force spacer wax to the model. If the wax is softened through the use of a flame, a double thick layer of wax may be preferred to create the correct amount of space, as a flame can cause the wax spacer to thin out too much. Softening the wax with warm water will reduce the chances of over thinning the wax. Trim the excess wax to complete the spacer. The first step in creating tissue stops is to cut rectangular holes into the wax spacer. Place the holes where you would like the tissue support to be in the framework. Using the Fiber Force Pink Light Cure Resin, fill the holes in the spacer, overfilling only slightly. A package of Fiber Force comes with enough material to make, on average, at least two and a half frameworks with full palatal or arch coverage. The actual amount used will vary by case and design. Remove the mesh from the package and using standard scissors, cut the quantity needed while keeping the blue protective plastic cover in place. Remove the plastic cover and position the fiber force mesh onto the model. It's not necessary to adapt the mesh closely to the model at this time. This will be accomplished using the splint vac unit in the next stage of the process. From the splint vac complete kit, open the container with the acrylic beads and place them into the chamber. These beads will stabilize the model and allow you to modify its height. Next, place the model inside the splint vac unit, and with a reciprocating motion, lower the model to just below the top of the rim. Each splint vac unit comes with three reusable silicone gaskets. Remove one from the package and place it on the top of the chamber. Being careful not to pinch the gasket, apply the aluminum o-ring into place to seal the splint vac. The o-ring only needs to be placed firmly enough to create a complete seal. If it's seated too firmly it may damage the gasket 
and it will make the O-ring more difficult to remove. Attach the manual hand pump to the tubing. Activate the pump to remove the air from the chamber and draw the gasket perfectly into place over the model. It may be necessary in certain cases to gently press the gasket further into place while evacuating more air to ensure the mesh is fully adapted to the model. When doing so, be careful to avoid piercing the gasket with sharp fingernails. Once the gasket is in place, close the valve at the side of the splint vac to ensure the vacuum is maintained. Remove the hand pump from the tubing by pulling down on the blue ring at the tip of the pump. Alternatively, the tubing can be removed from the base of the splint vac chamber if preferred. If the tubing stays in place, it's then tied down using the plastic clip. The splint vac unit is then placed inside a light curing unit, such as the triad, to polymerize the mesh framework. As long as the splint vac fits inside, any light curing unit will work. The stronger the unit, the less curing time is required. Once the appropriate time is passed, the splint vac is removed. Next, the splint vac is opened and the model is removed from the chamber. The mesh framework is then boiled out using water or steam to remove any wax residue. If a boil light unit is used, a final cleaning with water from a kettle or a steamer is recommended as boil out units often contain partially contaminated water and won't completely clean the framework. The mesh framework can now be trimmed to its final design using scissors or a carbide burr. The final step in the process is unblocking the thin resin flash that fills the spaces in between the fibers. This will allow the acrylic to flow through the framework when the denture is processed. Be sure to avoid damaging the fibers when opening the spaces. The framework is now ready to be processed into the denture using your usual technique. Thank you for taking the time today to learn about Fiber Force. Our resources are updated all the time, so please be sure to check our website for updated information, and have a great day.